In biomechanics, we spend a lot of time talking about stress, but we actually also spend a lot of time talking about strain. Anytime some organ or tissue in your body deforms or changes shape in any way, we could say that it is strained. So this video is dedicated to introducing you to the study of arguably one of the funnest biomechanics topics, strain. The simplest way to visualize strain involves a 1D normal strain. If you had a thin cylinder with an initial length L0 and stretched it to a new length LF, this new length will equal the original length plus the length change delta L. In essence, shape change is length change. The strain in this case would be considered a normal strain and its value would be delta L over L0. If no line segments in a body changed length, then the body did not change shape. That's probably the most straightforward way of thinking about it. As a body deforms, you can track the deformation using lines. These lines can change both their length and the angle between them. If they change length, we have normal strains. If they change angle, we have shear strains. If both things happen, we have normal and shear strains. Now, picture this general arbitrary shape as a small section of your heart at time zero. Now fast forward to time t greater than zero. The shape of that section changed as the heart moved. Let's say that the first heart section is in the original undeformed or reference coordinates. The second heart section at t greater than zero is in the current or deformed coordinates. Let's analyze what happened. But first, we need to have a 3D coordinate system going into this sketch. Don't forget, always have a coordinate system in your drawing, like always. If we focus on a point P in the original drawing, we would see that it moved around in the current or deformed drawing. Let's call P in the new position P prime. We can define a position vector x that represents the position of particle p in the undeformed configuration and a vector x representing the position of point p in the deformed configuration. Note that since these position vectors depend on the origin, they are not conventional vectors. Conventional vectors as true physical quantities do not depend on the origin. The displacement vector between p's old and p's new position would be x minus capital X. We will call this displacement vector U. The differences in U, or the gradients of U, are actually what will give us the shape change. The position of this material particle P will depend on time and on the original position of P. This allows us to rewrite the above relationship with more detail. The same thing would happen to another point Q near P. It would move around with time and we can label it Q prime. In the process of undergoing strain, the distance between these two points also changed. The distance went from being d capital X to being d lowercase x. These two vectors are different since both p and q moved around, but turns out they relate to each other via the deformation gradient tensor. We will dive into the deformation gradient tensor later in this video and in great detail in another video. So let's first make sure we really understand some of these basic underlying concepts. As I had briefly mentioned, there are two coordinates playing here, the reference and the current coordinates. When we reference what is going on to an initial stage, we're using a Lagrangian or material description of the motion. We will be working with the Lagrangian description for the most part. On the other hand, when we reference what we see to the current state, we use an Eulerian or spatial description of motion. An example of a Eulerian tensor is actually the Cauchy stress tensor. Now back to the deformation gradient tensor. The deformation gradient tensor is a short, non-symmetric, non-singular, second degree tensor. We like to use the letter F to represent it. Depending on the textbook, you may see one or two arrows above the F to represent the tensor. Some textbooks may actually write a line underneath it or make the F bold with the same intent of showing that F is a tensor. Although, as you will later learn, F is actually a pseudo tensor. As I had mentioned before, F is actually able to relate the differential line segments between D lowercase x and D capital X between two particles in a body undergoing strain. The relationship is a linear transformation. F is able to linearly transform D capital X 
from the undeformed state to d lowercase x at the deformed state. F is describing a transformation from original to current configurations. We can say that the deformation gradient tensor F tells us the gradient or the rate at which the distance between two points changes. As you can imagine, this is very important when we are studying strain or shape change in biomechanics. So this is all for now, but I will see you in the next video.